Whistle podu. Whistle podu indeed. Here's the thing. I'm sure you've noticed this that every time you come for an event, there's a standing ovation like this. It's um, you are referred to very often as a as a legend. आपकी उम्र क्या है? How could you be called a legend? How does that feel? That's a priceless feeling in itself, isn't it? But it feels very old to start off, <coughs> because uh, to be called a legend, first of all, I don't believe I'm a legend. Uh, but to be called a legend, which means you have spent a lot of time on the field, on the field, whether depending on whichever stream you come from, whether you are from Bollywood, whether you are from cricket or any other sport, or business, banking, any sector. So. i definitely feel old <clears throat> that's one thing uh but more than that what what i feel is the connect that i have with the people and uh i think most of you would have played cricket at some point of time and the reason why people connect with me is because the way i play cricket is how they play cricket you know it's not like paji sachin tendulkar playing cricket where you see him and you're like i can't play like that you know they see me play and they like aise to hum bhi khelte hain you know on the gully on the ground we have played like that you know he, he doesn't have an orthodox way of playing you know he's somebody who hits the ball everywhere and he has a lot of fun on the field so i feel that's what my greatest strength has been it's it's not about being a legend i was uh, fortunate uh, when i was leading a team i had a very uh, experienced team with me and you know it makes the job a lot easier so it's not about being the legend for me it was all about connecting with the people and making sure that the indian cricket team you know we as a team we perform to the potential that we have you just spoke of connect uh, there's a survey where the results revealed that you are the second most admired man in india taliya ho jaye that is a big deal second second to whom second to our prime minister well i think uh, i can stand in election now <laughs> i don't, I, I I don't think wo din dur nahi hai mujhe lagta hai ye bhi possible hai no it's 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 a very because tough job because you job. are you are for the people you are loved by the people yeah and but uh, i'm more of the army guy you know than a, than a politician you know i love spending time with the army i'm pretty much state forward uh, politics is you know i i think if i ever want to get into politics i'll have to really study a lot you know do a lot of changes and you know then maybe i'll be able to adapt uh, but you know it's it's a big thing to be admired by so many people and you know thanks to cricket if i was not playing cricket don't i don't think you know there'll be so many people who would be admiring me and a lot of times uh, people say oh you are very lucky you know i love when people say that and i just tell them you know it's not like i am lucky it's just that the number of people i meet and the connect that i have with the people they are the ones who pray for me you know and that's why i'm so lucky it's not like you know i, I was born lucky but over the years it has happened that you know whenever there's a 50 50 scenario more often than not you know it turns in in the favor of us you know whether it's me as an individual or as a team so you know being lucky is important but at the same time i think uh, the admiration and uh it's something you know uh you know you you feel a lot more satisfied looking at you know the kind of ovation you get wherever you go and the kind of love and affection that people show towards you we we'll talk about luck in just a minute but i'm going to make a prediction here it's it is going to happen i see it ms dhoni prime minister of the country couple of years from now that is a possibility i really believe i really believe and then when this happens You said Mandira Bedi predicted it, okay? Sitting on <laughs> stage talking to Dhoni, but I think that's more pressure than you know uh, Are, trying to win a World Cup. You don't take pressure. Imagine, imagine, especially with the banking sector and everyone. Oh, the GDP is going down. You know, the financial deficit is happening. <laughs> export, import, all that thing. So it's a, it's a. Uh, I personally feel uh, the job. of a politician whether it's a minister or a state politician main aapki baat nahi bol rahi hu aage aage ja kar it's a very tough job you know we all love criticizing uh, <laughs> politicians but at the end of the day you know uh, we are a big country the number of people that in itself is a big challenge you know we talk about uh, you know local trains or buses or roads but 
we are just too big and it will take time you know for we'll us to uh, become what some of the other countries are but i always felt till your intention is right and you're moving forward thinking that this is what is good for the country or the state you know it, that is the right decision for that make. you need a change maker and someone who stays cool and calm under pressure just saying but as captain as leader uh, we've seen a world cup win we've seen a t20 world cup win we've seen india uh, at number 1 ranked at number 1 for 18 months in the test format so you've given our country many 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 priceless moments a big round of applause for that <laughs> ladies and gentlemen but what would you say is your priceless moment as far as your the cricketing career is concerned a as captain and b as player well the answer would be very different you know a lot of people would be expecting okay this is something that he would pick that is something that he would pick but uh, the two special moments uh, first i would say it was just after the 2007 20 world cup we landed in mumbai so for a lot of us we were part of the team that went to england and from england we got selected and we went to south africa for the t20 world cup so we won we were coming back and that day it was very cloudy and you know it was raining so it, we started our descent we were about to land and i look outside i'm like you know what it's raining there would be nobody to receive us we shall book all our flights and we'll go back to our respective cities because we have been out for so long so we land and even before immigration there were like loads of people to receive us and i still remember we were in a double decker bus it was I an remember. open top no bus no one can forget that experience raining cloudy yes and it took us literally 5 hours from the airport to the wankhede stadium we all got wet we were in the bus we dried up somehow we again got wet because in between again it was raining so it happened like twice or thrice and then the most memorable moment came so what is called the queen's necklace we are right in the center there are people all around there are cars parked all around there are people on the street you look ahead there are thousands of people you look behind there's thousands of people and everybody had a smile on their face none of them were sitting in the car all of them were outside they were having their cameras they had that smile they were clicking pictures i don't know how many of them actually missed their flights or were very late for work it was not late it would have been very late for work but that's that's what it meant to them you know we were thinking okay we'll go back home and then we kind of response we got and also we don't really have anything to compare it to because 2011 we won but there was no celebration like that like this because we never went out nothing really happened even the time when we won we were in the stadium till 1 130 and we actually like i personally actually didn't see the people celebrate on the street whatever we saw was on television so you know that was a very memorable moment the second would be it was during the 2011 world cup it was during the finals we were uh, sitting in uh, not sitting we were playing at wankhede and it was like 10 or 15 runs were needed and me and you raj we were batting and all of a sudden the crowd they start singing the song vande mataram oh my god and, that gives me goose flesh and you are right in the middle and imagine 35 40000 people you know saying vande mataram and so it used to start from let's say if it started from north stand your ears actually move because it goes around so that would be my second most memorable moment or one or two you know i can't really stack it saying this was the preferred moment but it was something that was very very special and i don't know if i would ever be able to witness something like that because you may have 40000 people uh, singing the national anthem or singing the national song but that atmosphere the the moment uh, the hard work that was put for that 45 50 days you know during the world cup whether it will come or not you know so uh, i feel these are the two priceless moment uh, when it comes to my cricketing career and there have been lots of other moments but uh, these two i think were very very priceless you know to me you are a very um, country proud man and the fact that you've joined the army and what is playing for india 
mean to you? And also leading India, it's two different things. It's, it's one to get that blue jersey and then to lead that team of blue. Well, leading India was like a, I won't even say a dream because I never thought I'll play for India. If you can't play for India, how can you ever dream of, you know, leading the Indian cricket sure. team? So that was like, you know, everything has a radar. It was beyond the radar, so let's not even talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but playing for the country, uh, again, I was somebody who lived in the present. You know, I was very much about what I'm supposed to do now, what I'm supposed to do the next day or the coming days. So, to me, playing cricket was very important. Whether I played for my school team or my district or my state or my zone. So, I always kept things very simple. So, finally, when I got a chance, you know, all of a sudden you start to figure out what really is happening and the good thing with cricketers or the bad thing with cricketers or sports people is first of all we get a chance which is a good thing we get a chance to represent the country sure. you know but the only problem is you can only represent the country for a period of time it may be three years it may be five years it may be 15 years so you know once you have finished your cricketing career or sports career you can no longer represent your country unless you start doing something else you know which happens to be on that line so for us the for me personally the the most important thing is whenever i am going out representing my country i want to give it my best shot you know it's not about the expectation that others have from me for me it's all about what good i can do how well i can contribute and you you take keep uh, you keep taking it forward yeah. once you are if you make your debut you are different once you reach a stage where your career is ending then it's not only about your performance you have to make sure that others who are part of the team the youngsters they get the right guidance so that they are the ones who will take care of the future of cricket or sports so there are other kind of responsibilities that fall uh, in front of you but overall I always felt country was the uh, the biggest uh, motivation for me. It was never uh, about scoring runs or taking wickets. You know, it, it was more about the team should do well and we should win the games. And that always helped because it kept things very simple. You know, once you start getting into the groove of I want to score runs, I want to take wickets, I want to do this, I want... We play a team sport. So for us, it's always about, you know, all of us moving together. and. You know, what is something that you can do, but maybe some of the others can't do. To realize all of that and then to move forward, taking that added responsibility, that's what makes you, you know, slightly special. Because you can always think about what is good for you, but what is good for the team and then you keep moving forward with that decision is something that will make you, that will make people appreciate you, especially the ones who are part of the team. So, you just spoke of youngsters. I mean, what advice would you give a youngster today who is getting into, um, into cricket or sport, any kind of competitive sport maybe? The youngsters today, the only piece of advice uh, I would give them which was very relevant when I made my debut or people in the 80s played, cricket is the core. You take care of cricket, everything else will take, take care. care of itself. So, this is you, your social media. I follow you on Instagram, is, has got a lot, lots of videos and lots of images of your beautiful little daughter. Tell us or share with us a, one of the most priceless moments that you, you've had with her. I, think my I mean, there are plenty because most, <laughs> most of his feed is Ziva, Ziva and him. What, is the main, what does the name mean? Uh, it's a Hebrew name, basically it means light. Okay. So... She is the light of your life, clearly. Yes, and we picked it from a serial. You know, there used to be a serial called NCIS. I don't know how many of you watched it. There was a character named Ziva in that. I, I somehow always liked small names, you know, which are not very heavy. Not, But then I realized Ziva Singh Dhoni becomes a very heavy name, you know, when you put all the things together. But anyways, that was done. So my most priceless moment with Ziva was, I missed her birth. I was busy with the 2015 World Cup. My wife still curses me. She's like, okay, you know, when she grows up, I will tell her that uh, your father was not there when she was born, when you were born. So, uh, I think the most priceless moment was after the World Cup, when we came back uh, and Sakshi and Ziva, they were still in Delhi at that point of time, Gurgaon. And the first time I saw her, I picked her up and she must be two months or one and a half months. And she made a lot of noise. 
that was the first time she was seeing me i don't know whether she saw me or not because they say as a as a kid who's one month two month they don't they can't really the, see yeah, long yeah their vision isn't developed but for the full 5 minute she was making noise she was giggling and she was like she has never done it i don't know why she is doing she even had problem with that why is she doing it <laughs> why she never first you not there me? now she's yes. come why is she responding to you like this yeah so <laughs> i think that was a priceless moment because whatever said and done that first time when you see your new born you know something happens which is very difficult to describe in word and from that till now she is four and a half and every every time she comes in and she has a a uh, new question or answer and the latest is uh, you know when when you ask me okay why do you love papa ah oh, papa is money oh, wow. i don't know who taught her but <laughs> she straight for she like why do you love papa oh because papa is money <laughs> but but that's how today's kids are you know i i remember when i was growing up if my father is in that room i would be in some other room you know if my father is speaking you'll always keep quiet and, but i think that was the last generation the coming generation is more of the type you know where the son or the daughter once they turn 18 or 20 or 21 whatever the legal age is they'll be like that come let's go for a drink so that's where the future is heading and it will be very strange when all of a sudden the father says beta i don't drink <laughs> okay you can give me company you have a soda you know i'll drink beer <laughs> So okay tell me this what is the most important thing that success has taught you Success tells you teaches you to be humble in life and uh, I felt No it doesn't teach everybody it's it's wonderful and I'm sure all of you will agree with me that he is he has so much humility and he's such a humble person in spite of uh, achieving so much what you have learned is humility not everybody has that kind of humility after no, success I, I, I'll tell you as human beings we are the most complex creatures german shepherd maybe there are five of us who have german shepherd usually their characters are quite the same you know you may have a lab labs are quite the same we are the only person where two siblings born as twins will have very different characters mm. you know we study the same syllabus in school cbse mein padhai ki hai ye ye hamare courses hain but what happens exam hota hai same teacher padha rahi hai sab kuch but the results are very different yes so why cricket is so close to life is you score a 100 today and the very next game you get out on a zero mm. so i personally always say cricket is a great leveler Level it levels you out sure you know you start flying high it brings you down and the thing it's more of a mental game than a physical game you know it's the mind that is much more stronger and these are the thing that you keep teaching the youngsters even if they are not a sports person that sure. if you are able to control your mind you can actually do a lot of things better in life kyunki mind is the most powerful thing we all think it's a physical it's a physical i am tired i can't run more it's the mind that is telling the body you can't run more that's right so what cricket teaches you is to be humble in life or i would say the syllabus that is covered by cricket of course there are individuals who will pick what they want to pick mm. it is glamorous yes it is glamorous to be humble is more important to be part of the glamour sure so the small small thing the hard work the discipline you know the honesty 